you enjoy videos that are well-researched and cited? Do you like helping creators make their content better and faster? Do you have a passing interest in all things Disney? Then have I got the page for you. Anne Elizabeth is now on Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you can help me create videos faster with higher production values. In return, you can gain perks like early episode access, the ability to pick episode topics, your name featured at the end of every video, and so much more. And that's not all, because there are stretch goals. When I hit a certain number of patrons, I will make special videos on specific topics. Some options are limited, so head over to patreon.com slash today to find out more. Link in the description below. And now, our feature program. A while back, I made a video talking all about all the details and Easter eggs in the Haunted Mansion. A lot of people seem to like it. Disney attractions are filmed to the brim with these kinds of little secrets. Ones that have so much effort put into them but are often overlooked. So it felt fair to talk about how other attractions do the very same thing. You've read the title so you know that today we'll be looking at the wildest ride in the wilderness. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Like last time, these will be mostly pertaining to the Walt Disney World version, because that's the one I know best. However, there might be some secrets pulled from other versions of the attraction. I'll be sure to make those distinctions when necessary. So, pull down on your lap bar and hold on to your hats and glasses as we dive deep into the depths of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Did you know that Big Thunder Mountain isn't just one singular mountain? It's actually an entire range. In the queue in the Magic Kingdom, you'll find two depictions. A map of the mines and a painting of the mountains. If you look closely, you'll see that every mountain is represented. While Disney World's is on the front, Disneyland's is behind it, and behind that is Disneyland Paris's. It connects all the different versions of the attraction together. Mine is Tokyo. But we discussed this already. While walking through the queue in Florida, you'll find wanted ads for two criminals, Theodore Oakville and Amos Tucker. This is a reference to the 1975 Disney film, The Apple Dumpling Game. Theodore and Amos, played by Don Knotts and Tim Conway respectively, are a couple of robbers, but they're really bad at it and always mess things up. They were spotted at the TW Bullion Mine and stole some lead bricks. They apparently thought that they were silver. You mean it ain't gold? Of course it's gold, stupid. Said mine is owned by T.W. Bullion, a relative of Barnabas T. Bullion, the owner of the mines in Big Thunder Mountain. Throughout the queue, you can learn more about some of the people who worked for the Big Thunder Mining Company. Perhaps most notably, the foreman. A rather stern and maybe authoritarian one, if evidence is to be believed. He was paid much more than his peers, and he threatened to put miners on the graveyard shift if they did so much as take an early lunch break. I'm guessing Tumbleweed didn't have labor unions. Though the real kicker is the foreman's name. Say it out loud. Do you get it? Wilkers would actually be expanded upon in the Disney Kingdom's comic, where he's shown to be even more of an authoritarian a-hole. Don't worry, he gets what's coming to him. After you board your train, you'll quickly pass through the town of Tumbleweed. If you have a quick enough eye, you might catch a glimpse of Camolus Isobar, the Rainmaker. He's a con artist, selling snake oil to the people. In the queue, you might be able to find a letter from an angry customer complaining about an ineffective hair tonic. While he was in Tumbleweed, he promised to bring back the reins, if only for a modest price. But before he could take the money and run, a massive rainstorm hit, completely flooding the town and leaving him trapped. Never let it be said that Big Thunder doesn't have a sense of humor. The Kamalus animatronic is also said to be a caricature of Mark Davis, though this has never really been confirmed. I made mention of this one in the last video, but now I can confirm it. Before your train returns to the station at Disneyland, you'll pass through the town of Rainbow Ridge. One of their establishments is the Panhandle Hotel. You might not be able to see it on the ride, but look closely into the window. Sitting in the lobby is a painting of none other than Barnabas T. Bullion, the man who made this all possible. In fact, uh, there's quite a bit more I've learned about his story and the history of the Big Thunder Mining Company ever since I made that first video. Perhaps we need to make a part two. 
While we're on the subject, Rainbow Ridge and many of the buildings were repurposed from the extinct Frontierland attraction, Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland. It was one of the largest attractions in the park, a slow moving train ride through western scenes. Rainbow Ridge got its name from the famous Rainbow Caverns, which were said to be some of the most beautiful vignettes ever put into a Disney attraction. When it closed, the land where it stood became home to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The town in that ride was originally called Big Thunder, as can be seen in old photographs. However, in recent years, the name was changed back to Rainbow Ridge, as a tribute to this lost attraction. The naming convention is carried over into other towns. Grizzly Gulch, Hong Kong's Frontierland-esque land, is named after another segment of Mine Train. Well, here comes a stage from Grizzly Gulch. That's where all the gold is panned. Thunder Mesa, the home of Pierce's Big Thunder, is taken from a different attraction, the Western River Expedition, though that one was never built. Tumbleweed is the odd man out, but it's named after these things. Or it might be a reference to an old Roy Rogers song. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed. Within the queue, you can find a letter from Jason Chandler to Barnabas T. Bullion, urging him to stop the mining. He came to this conclusion after a conversation with a woman named Madame Zarkov. She was a member of the Adventurous Club, which was a restaurant that used to be at Downtown Disney. Not only that, but she apparently works at the Museum of the Weird, another attraction that was never built. Add on Chandler's Sea connections, and this ties everything together into this big, expansive universe. And those were just a few of the things you might have missed at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Most of these came from a Facebook group dedicated to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers universe, and they've done a terrific job documenting everything related to that. Go check them out, go give them some love, and all that good stuff. Is there anything I missed? Well, let me know down in the comments below. And be sure to tell me any other attraction with little details, because I might cover that next. Once again, the link to my Patreon is in the description. If you want to support the channel, consider checking it out. But, that's all the time I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. That be my gold. None shall take of it. None shall take it. None shall take it. None shall take it. None shall take it. What part of the none shall take it do you not understand? Give me that. What is wrong with you?